Hello everyone, I'm Emily and today we are going to be taking a look at a few new Arteza items starting with these two pencil sets, the 72 Arteza Classic Bright Colors and the 50 Arteza Pastel Colors. To begin with, we have the packaging. There are these white covers to help keep the pencils in place. We're going to go ahead and remove. I spoke with Arteza and as all the pencils we're going to be reviewing are labeled as classic, this is the indicator that they are beginner level art tools moving up into the expert level artist grade supplies. However, from what we've learned with other budget pencils, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can't create beautiful artwork with them. For me personally, I don't plan on keeping them in this case. The cardboard doesn't really keep them from sliding around and if the pencils get knocked around too much, that increases the risk of breakage. I've purchased a case that I plan on keeping all of today's pencils in. These are a triangular barrel pencil, which reminds me a bit of the Stedler Ergosoft. That being said, the difference of these that I can see straight away is that the Ergosoft has an extra coating on the inside and these do not. They have a color number on the side, however, they do not have a color name. The numbers are matched up on the back of the case, although I'll be making my own color chart and rearranging the order a bit. You can find that free color chart on my website, the link for that is in the description below. When using the pencils, I found that the lead is similar to the Ergosoft. I've had a lot of people ask if they're similar to the Expert Arteza pencils, and the answer for that is no. Both the pencils are built differently. The Classic pencils have a thinner barrel and a lighter feel than the Expert. I have noticed that the lead feels a bit looser than the Expert. Obviously, there is a larger range of colors with the Expert colors, but if you're wanting a smaller set that is more budget friendly, this may be the one for you. They only come in a 72 set, but with a retail price of $28.99 US dollars, that comes out to only about 40 cents a pencil. Not to mention, you can use my 10% off discount to lower that price even more. If you're concerned about being able to sharpen the pencils because of the triangular barrel, you needn't be. I used a wide range of sharpeners all the way from the Stedler handheld, the Doll 133, and electric Arteza sharpeners, all without issue. For the color range, I would give it about an 8 out of 10. Some of the colors were a tad too similar for my taste, however, unlike a lot of pencil sets, it came with a good number of purple shades. I only wish there were a few more browns. Let's take a look now at the pastel set of pencils. There are 50 of the pencils with the same triangular barrel as the bright set. This box folds open slightly differently, however, I still plan on putting them in the same case as the brights. There seems to be a good range of colors, but we'll do another color chart to see how they hold up to another pastel set I have. And just like before, there are no pencil names, but there are pencil numbers. We're going to go ahead and swatch these out using this swatch chart. They feel very similar in use as the brights. Really, the only difference between this set and the brights is the fact that it's smaller and these are pastel. That being said, as there are only 50 of these pencils, the cost is lower. These pencils ring in at $18.99 US dollars, which leaves them at about 38 cents a pencil before the 10% discount. Comparing these to the Castle Art Pastel Tints, first off, you can see that it has two more colors. The color ranges themselves are pretty similar, however I found the Arteza pencils much easier to use than the pastel tints. The lead for the pastel tints was much harder and therefore not as easy on the hands and wrist after prolonged use. Also, the cost is significantly better. The Castle Arts come in at $49.99 when they're not on sale, which brings them to about $1.04 per pencil, versus the $0.38 cents that Arteza is. That being said, the Castle Art pencil itself seems to be built a bit more solidly. I would say the build of the Castle Art pencils is similar to the build of the Arteza Expert color pencils. Different things can come into play for this, anywhere from the wood used for the pencil to the lead size to the amount of fillers and even the binding on the inside of the barrel. Between the two of them, if you were just wanting to try out a pastel set of pencils, for the price and usability alone, I would go with the Arteza pastel set over the Castle Art. And if you're curious, I haven't tried any other pastel sets like the Holbein's the Pastel Loves, so I can't say anything about the comparison to them. Next up, we have the 72 count Arteza Classic Watercolor Bright Color set of pencils. We're going to compare these to the color chart for the regular bright set of color pencils. As with the previous pencil sets, I don't plan on using this packaging for long-term storage and these will go in the same pencil case as the brights and pastel sets. I'll have the link for the case in the description below. This set also comes with a bonus paintbrush. It doesn't have the Arteza name on the brush, and as far as quality is concerned, it's a bit of a basic brush. Really, it's like any brush you would find in a standard art set, so we're going to be using this brush today for our pencil testing. Okay, so as most of you know, I wanna give you an accurate and honest review. Yes, I love Arteza products, but every now and then there's a product that I am a bit less than impressed with. That being said, before I show you what I discovered with this pencil, one of the great things about Arteza, and I know many artists and colorists can confirm this, is that they have amazing customer service. And if you have a problem with any of their products, you can contact them and they will always rectify the issue. This is something that I would assume was a fluke in the manufacturing. 
This is something I've only ever seen in other budget pencils and even Prismacolors. Now I'm gonna be careful because I don't wanna break it, but when I pull it out of the box, I noticed the lead was loose. That's not something that should happen as it can pull out of both sides. I spoke with Arteza and the pencils do in fact have glue running along the inside of the length of the barrel and they offered to replace the pencil set. So if you happen to purchase these pencils and if you happen to have this problem, contact Arteza and they will fix the problem for you. That being said, I have to say that it says a lot about the quality of the lead that despite it being loose in the barrel, the lead didn't break or shatter. This particular pencil is number 506. Like I said though, any issues, contact Arteza. This is also one of the reasons I recommend purchasing Arteza products through their website versus Amazon because of the customer service. I didn't find any more pencils like this in the set, so that just reaffirms that it was most likely just a fluke. So we're gonna take a short detour so I can show you how I fixed this. I went ahead and sharpened it, but obviously it becomes difficult to use the pencil because if you push down while coloring, the lead is going to come back out. Here's what you can do if you have this particular issue. You can pull the lead down just a bit. I'm gonna use Gorilla Glue. Careful not to get it on you. With the lead pulled down, excuse the hand shakiness, you can put a small drop of glue inside the barrel. Then I'm going to take the lead and push it back up to where I want it to be, essentially coating the inside of the barrel and the lead. You can leave a little cap of glue on top to assist with holding the lead in place, or you can carefully wipe it off. Then let the glue dry completely and you should be good to go. For the pencils themselves, they activate really well and the color drags across the paper nicely. I didn't feel like I needed to add a lot of water to get them to spread across the paper, which is great for coloring books because unless a book is specifically made with watercolor paper, the less amount of water you need to use, the better. Here are the two charts together, and the brights one is actually my rearranged pencil list. I plan on rearranging the watercolor one as well. As you can see though, the colors are very similar. With the watercolor pencils, the color is actually more vibrant than the non-watercolor brights. It's interesting though, the classic pencils activated really well, in fact a bit better than I thought they would. Obviously with the 120 experts, there are more color choices. Between the two though, I would say the colors are similar. The color numbers are not, however. A001 would probably be white quartz, which is A024 on the other one. There is no A001 on the expert watercolor list. For those wondering how these pencils differ from the Arteza expert watercolor pencils, first of all, the quality of the expert pencils are better. Just looking at this, this is an Arteza expert pencil. This is the classic. The shape of the barrel is an obvious difference. Weight wise, the expert is heavier and the lead is a bit higher quality. If you're choosing to get one over the other, I would absolutely choose the Expert. However, the Classic isn't meant to be on the same level as the Expert pencils. They're beginner pencils, so if you're on a budget, these are a great choice. The way they activate, they're really bright and vibrant. For me, the issue was just a slight quality fluke. So really, it would just come down to how much you're wanting to invest. If you're just wanting to try out watercolor pencils to get a feel for them, I would absolutely choose the classics over the experts. The last item we have to take a look at are the Glitter Real Brush Pens. There are 24 of them and you all know how much I love sparkles. In comparison to the pencils we just looked at, this one has a nice sturdy box. You can totally keep these in this box for storage. So these are a black tube with color coordinated caps. These are a bit like the Wink of Stella pens in the sense that you need to twist off the top, remove the ring, and then twist it back on to begin releasing the ink inside. There are color numbers on the back of the box, however, there are no matching color numbers on the barrel. I created the chart based on those color numbers, but without the numbers on the barrel, there isn't a sure way to match them, so we're just gonna do our best with the colors on the back of the box. Looks like there was a little bit of a leak, but it cleaned up easily. Now we're going to activate this yellow pen. I've already removed the ring and reattached the cap. We're going to squeeze gently and watch for the ink to start moving down. Once the white brush has absorbed the color, it's ready to use. I do wonder, with how similar these are to the Wink of Stella brushes, if that means they'll ever release a clear version of it. This first one isn't showing up very well in the video even though I can see it. I'm thinking that it's possibly because it's a lighter color. I've taken the ring off and activated this pen, but I mistakenly squeezed a little too hard and it caused the ink to overflow a bit. This isn't isolated to these pens though, I've done it with the Wink of Stella pens. Sadly, it was at the end of a large four page spread from Lost Ocean I had just completed. The lesson from this? Just make sure to squeeze gently and, and honestly, once you get the ink down into the brush, you shouldn't have to squeeze the tube too much afterwards. For the first squeeze on this one, there was a bit too much glitter initially, but none of the others were like this. Again, this was most likely due to my squeezing it a little too much to begin with. I have a tendency to be a little heavy handed. As you can see from this camera view, the glitter definitely shows up much better with the darker colors. 
In real life though, all the colors, light or dark, show the glitter well. I think these will be great for lettering and adding extra little embellishments on my pages. So these are all the rings from the glitter pens that I took off. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanna keep them and do some sort of craft with them. Look at them, they're so glittery and pretty and rainbowy. I love that, definitely saving them. So we looked at the pastel pencils, the brights pencils, the watercolor pencils, as well as the glitter brush pens. And as a consensus, I can say, I don't think you'd be disappointed with any of them. Any of these from the classic lines of pencils are going to be great for a beginner. They're budget friendly, you can get great results from them. With the glitter pens as well, fantastic results and who doesn't love a bit of sparkle? If you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video, be sure to drop them in the comments below and let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.